Um, with respect to the inflation forecast, because he did say at one point in the press conference that um, he does expect, the, gov the governing committee expect that inflation will start falling back from the beginning of next year, probably quite sharply. And yet the bank continues to guide towards further rate hikes. Is it therefore right to assume that we're approaching the end of this hiking cycle? Well, I think um, I mean, the first thing to say is the reason why we expect inflation in the headline measure to fall quite rapidly next year is really the symmetric reason why we saw inflation rise so rapidly over the past year, which is that we've seen this very dramatic rise in European wholesale gas prices which passed through into headline inflation into the UK, in the UK at least, uh, in a relatively rapid way. So um, now that we hope at least that wholesale gas prices are beginning to stabilize, that's an assumption rather than a forecast. We've had difficulty as others have in forecasting developments on that dimension. But as the uh, base effects, the big rises that took place a year ago drop out of the annual calculation of inflation, we'd expect to see headline inflation fall quite quickly. But the crucial thing, as I think we've been pretty clear about through time, is that we are focused on trying to steer that part of the inflationary process that we have greater influence over and which will be more persistent, namely the dynamics in British pricing, the dynamics in British wage setting, the dynamics in British costs. And I think the kind of question for us is, even as headline inflation begins to fall, have we done enough with monetary policy to contain those underlying more persistent dynamics in inflation to ensure that they end up consistent with our 2% target over time? And I think the answer to that is, we still think there's more to do in order to control that domestically driven wage price cost dynamic within the UK, which has been disturbed by high, high headline inflation rates over the last year. Uh, uh, and, and I think acting to do that now is what we need to achieve in order to, to ensure both we get back to 2%, but more importantly, read, really, that we do so in a sustainable way, such that we're not forced to make more aggressive moves down the line in order to try and break an inflationary psychology in the UK that might otherwise emerge. Mm -hmm. One of the other major takeaways, if you look at the press this morning, a lot of people are picking on uh, your economic forecast, uh, eight consecutive quarters of negative GDP, longest recession um, in, in, in very long time, <laughs> if you go back uh, historically. But uh, I guess the question is, does the UK economy have to experience such a long recession in order to bring inflation back to target? Is that the trade-off that we're dealing with here? Look, I think there is a difficult trade-off, and I think the bank both in its August statements and now again uh, in November, we've tried to make clear that the bank does face very difficult challenges. Uh, the environment we face is a difficult one. What, what I'd emphasize is, and it goes back to what I just said, is that the big story in the UK, the big disturbance to the UK, in fact, the big disturbance to the European economy more generally, is one that we've seen gas prices rise. We know the reason for that. It's largely to do with events in Ukraine. Gas prices rising, for an importer of gas, which the UK is, we're quite dependent on gas to generate in, uh, electricity, to generate uh, heating for our homes. That big rise in things we're importing, if what we're buying from the rest of the world is going up in price more quickly than what we're selling to the rest of the world, that is squeezing our income, that's squeezing our spending power, and that's at a time when inflation is high, owing to the higher gas prices, the higher utility prices, that's also squeezing incomes and pushing growth and domestic demand in the economy down. So the, the challenge for us at the bank is to ensure that we manage the transition to adjust to that very big, very disruptive shock to the UK economy. We, we ensure that we set monetary policy such that the slowdown in the economy, which I think is inevitable, that slowdown in the economy, the recession in the economy that we're forecasting, is not is sufficient, if you like, to ensure that inflation, particularly this domestically generated inflation, is uh, evolving consistent with our target in a sustainable way, but also to avoid that we overshoot in the opposite direction and generate a slowdown that's uh, not required. But I think an important element to understand when you assess our policy and you assess the outlook for the UK economy is that this disturbance coming from outside is simultaneously driving up inflation, but also squeezing demand, squeezing incomes, and weighing on growth. And that's something that monetary policy really cannot do much about. That's a real shock to the economy, which has a real implication for the economy. And ultimately, monetary policy can only help to smooth that implications of that. It can't really avoid them altogether.
Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersetti and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.